Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all my beloved students. Here's come the last part of our lesson in chapter 3 transportation. In human double blood circulatory system, blood transport in oxygen and nutrients. Blood also transport out waste products. Blood has two components. As you can see in this slide, a yellow liquid which floating on top of a red liquid. Blood can be separated using the centrifugal method. Let's now analyze the human blood components from the bottom to the top. At the bottom is the red blood cells which occupies 45% of the blood components. At the center consists of white blood cells and platelets which is less than 1%. And at the top is the blood plasma which is 55% of human blood components. Plasma is made up of approximately 90% of water and 10% of dissolved substances such as nutrients, carbon dioxide, enzymes, hormone, and waste products. There are four blood groups, A, B, A, B, and O. Every blood group is identified from its type of antigen and type of antibodies. The type of blood depends on the type of antigen. Blood A has the A antigen. Blood B has the B antigen. Blood AB has both A and B antigens. And finally, Blood O has none of the antigen. To remember the type of antibodies in the blood plasma, easily match the blood with the opposite letter. For example, blood A has anti-B antibodies. Blood B has anti-A antibodies. Blood AB has no antibodies. And finally, blood O has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. The blood donation is very determined by the type of antibodies in the blood plasma. For example, blood A has A antigen. Blood A cannot be transfused to someone with blood B because blood B has anti-A antibodies. So, anti-A antibodies will attack A antigen and cause coagulation that can lead to death. Like in mathematics calculation, when negative A is added to A, we will get zero as the result. So when donating blood, the blood groups of the donor must be compatible with the recipients. If not, blood will coagulate that can lead to death. Blood group O is the universal donor. Meanwhile, blood group AB is the universal recipient. Here we come to the last part of chapter 3, transportation, the transport system in plants. Transpiration is a process of water loss in the form of water vapor 
from the surface of leaves to the air through evaporation. Other than transpiration, exudation or gutation also occurs at night or when humidity is high where water loss in the form of liquid. Now let's look at how the transpiration goes through the plant. From the bottom, water is absorbed through osmosis process into the plant via its roots. Then, water moves upwards in the plant through its stem. And lastly, water is evaporated from the surface of leaves via transpiration. The factors that affect the rate of transpiration is almost the same as the factors that affect the rate of evaporation. The only difference is that the factor of surface area in evaporation is replaced with light intensity factor in transpiration. The other three factors remain the same. The temperature, the air humidity, and the movement of air. The first factor is light intensity. In bright light, the gut cells carry out photosynthesis process. The gut cell become turgid and stoma opens. So, when the light intensity is high, then the rate of transpiration increases. Second factor is the temperature. High temperature causes water vapor to evaporate quickly and encourage the loss of water from the plant. The rate of transpiration increases at this moment. Very high temperatures can cause the plant to wilt and die. Third factor is the air movement. Air push the water vapor around the leaves and becomes dry. Water vapor from within the leaves will evaporate through the stoma to the surrounding. So, we can conclude that the presence of the wind can increase the rate of transpiration. The fourth and final factor is air humidity. The rate of transpiration will decrease when the air humidity factor is high. When the water vapor contained in the air is high, then the difference in concentration of water molecules in the leaf and in the atmosphere reduces the rate of the water loss. So, among these four factors, only if the air humidity factor is high, then the transpiration rate will be reduced.